From Philharmonic Hall in Lincoln Center, home of the world's greatest musical events, another program of New York Philharmonic Young People's Concerts, under the musical direction of Leonard Bernstein. And here is Leonard Bernstein. My dear young friends, I am happy and proud to welcome you to our 10th season of Young People's Concerts. Imagine, it's been a whole decade we've been playing and talking about music for you, and I don't know how much you've actually learned, but I like to think we must be doing something right because, well, because it's our 10th season. And to add to the festivities, this is also the first season in which all our programs will be seen on television in color, which is why I've got this modishly colorful tie on. And that brings us to our subject, what is a mode? Well, for one thing, musical modes have nothing to do with neckties or dresses or even with fashions of a musical kind. Modes are simply scales, though not perhaps those very scales you practice on your piano. They're rather special scales, and I wouldn't have dreamed of bothering you with them except for an incident that happened a few months ago. My 14-year-old daughter, Jamie, happened to ask me one day why a certain Beatles song had such funny harmony. She couldn't seem to find the right chords for it on her guitar. And I began to explain to her that the song was modal. That is, it was based on what is called a mode. And I went on to show her the chords that came from that mode, and she got so excited she wanted to know more and more about it, till finally she said, well, why not tell all this on a young people's program? Nobody ever heard of modes. Well, I thought Jamie is just a natural music lover with the usual weekly piano lesson. And if she finds this material fascinating, why shouldn't you? So here goes, and you can blame it all on Jamie. Okay, we already know that a mode is a scale. But first of all, what is a scale? I'm sure you know, but maybe you've never tried to put it into words. Well, a scale is simply a way of dividing up the distance between any note and the same note repeated an octave higher. Now, the most famous and often used division of this octave range in our Western music is what we call the major scale. I guess you all know that one. And the other famous one is the minor scale. I guess you know that too. Now, what's the difference between the major and the minor? Many people think the only difference is that major scales sound happy and minor ones sound sad. Well, that's sometimes true, but not always. The real difference is in the arrangement of the intervals. You remember how deeply we dug into intervals last season? And you remember we found that the smallest interval, that is the distance from any note to its nearest neighbor, is called a half tone. So from C to C sharp, is a step of a half tone. And from C sharp to D is again a half tone. So it would stand to reason that from C straight to D is a whole tone, since two halves make a whole. Get it? Fine. Okay. Now this entire C major scale is nothing but a series of whole tones and half tones arranged in a special order. First, two whole tones. One, two, then a half tone, then three whole tones and then a half tone. That's a major scale. And the minor scale is almost the same arrangement of intervals, the main difference being in the third note of the scale, which in the minor is a half tone lower, so that the minor scale sounds like this. And it doesn't matter whether you start on C or on E flat or on Q sharp, you can always get a major or a minor scale by following the proper arrangement of intervals. <laughs> For instance, here's a major scale beginning on F sharp. And that's called F sharp major. Here's F sharp minor. And 
ideas of major scale beginning on B flat. That's called B flat major. And here's B flat minor. And so it goes. But the important thing to remember is that those two kinds of scales, major and minor, are modes. Major mode and minor mode. Two modes out of a much larger number of possible ones. Now, before I tell you anything else about modes, we're going to play you a short but marvelous piece by the great French composer Debussy. This piece is completely based on modes that are neither major nor minor. This brilliant piece, which is called Festivals, or in French, Fête, uses all kinds of other modes, which, of course, you won't know about yet. You'll just be hearing beautiful sounds that will seem a bit strange and ear-tickling. But we're going to play it again later at the end of this program, and I'm sure that by then, you'll be able to recognize most of the peculiar things that are going on. So for the moment, just enjoy it and imagine a splendid nighttime celebration with many colored lights and lanterns everywhere, gorgeous fireworks in the sky, and everyone dancing in costumes of, of long ago. And suddenly, in the middle of the piece, the dance music breaks off, and we faintly hear a, pro a procession in the far distance. And this march-like music comes nearer and nearer, and when it finally arrives in all its glory, the dance music and the march music are heard together in an exciting blend of tumultuous sound. And finally, at the end of the piece, it grows late, the crowds thin out, as does the music, and it all ends in a whisper with an echo or two of the night's festivities hanging in the air. Here is Debussy's Fête.
How about that for an exciting piece? I find it positively goose fleshy. And a lot of the excitement in it comes from the fact that it uses those strange scales or modes which are neither major nor minor. For instance, right at the beginning appears that swirling dance tune, which sounds at first as though it's in the usual minor mode. In fact, the first five notes of it are exactly the first five notes of the minor scale. But then comes the twist. These notes don't belong to any minor scale that we know. And what scale is this? Answer, it's the scale of the Dorian mode. Now, don't let that throw you. Keep calm, sit back, and let's quietly find out just what this Dorian mode is and why it sounds so special. The word Dorian obviously comes from the Greek, and in fact, as well as uh, all the other modes we're about to discover, uh, does come originally from the music of ancient Greece. We don't know too much about that old Greek music. What we do know is that the Greek modes eventually made their way to Rome and were taken up by the Roman Catholic Church during the Middle Ages in a somewhat different form. But the church kept the old Greek names for the modes, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, and Ionian. Now, there's a mouthful for you, I know, but they're much easier to understand than their names are to pronounce. And they are still used today in Catholic churches all over the world in those beautiful chants called plain song. Now here's a tiny example of plain song in the Dorian mode. <laughs> beautiful and uh, I, I bet you didn't know they could sing too did you you you've just witnessed the debut of a great new glee club <laughs> anyway that music is in the Dorian mode it uses exactly the same scale the same arrangement of intervals as Debussy used in his fit but what is this scale well that's easy to find the Dorian mode on your piano all you have to do is start on the note D and play only white notes all the way up to the next D. And you've got it. Simple. And that's true of all the other church modes as well, by the way. They're all to be found by starting on a given white note and making a scale up using white notes only. Isn't that lucky? And we're particularly lucky with the Dorian mode because it starts on D, and D is the first letter of the word Dorian. So you have no excuse for forgetting how to find this mode on your piano. Dorian, capital D, note D, white notes all the way up, and voila. Now, here's another piece in the Dorian mode. I wonder if you know this one. Every time I think that I'm the only one who's lonely, someone calls on me. And every now and then I spend my time with rhyme and verse and curse the false in me. And then along comes Perry. Along. <laughs> along comes Mary in the ancient and honorable Dorian mode. The same mode we just heard in Debussy and in the plain chant. Now who'd have thunk it? What is that old Greek mode doing in today's pop music? Well, I'll tell you. From about the time of Bach until the beginning of our own century, roughly 200 years, our Western music has been based almost exclusively on only two modes, the major and the minor. Now, I can't go into the whys and wherefores of it now, but it's true. And since most of the music we hear in concerts today was written during that 200-year period, we get to think that major and minor modes are all there are. But the history of music is much longer than a mere 200 years. There was an awful lot of music sung and played before Bach using all kinds of other modes. And in the music of our own century, when composers have gotten tired of being stuck with major and minor all the time, there's been a big revival of those old pre-Bach modes. And that's why Debussy used them so much, and other modern composers like Hindemith and Stravinsky 
and almost all the young songwriters of today's exciting pop music scene. The modes have provided them with a fresh sound, a relief from the old overused major and minor. For instance, if that swinging opening of Along Comes Mary had been written in the usual everyday minor mode, it would sound like this. Sort of square, isn't it? It's ordinary. But this, this has a kick in it, and that kick is Dorian. You can see that this Dorian mode is almost like an ordinary minor mode, but not quite. And that not quite is what makes the difference. And that difference gives the music a certain ancient, primitive, oriental feeling. That's why the plain chant we heard before is so stirring, so ancient as to seem timeless. And that's why the tune in Debussy's Fête seems so exotic and of another age. And that's why Along Comes Mary sounds so primitive and earthy. Now, by way of contrast, listen to this opening section of Sibelius' Sixth Symphony, which is also in the Dorian mode, and see if you can feel again that same timeless, brooding, ancient, far-off quality, only this time coming from the remote, lonely forests of Finland. See what I mean by the special feeling of the Dorian mode? Are you beginning to get the sound of it in your ears? Well, let's get technical just for a minute and find out exactly what it is that gives us this feeling. As we know, this Dorian mode is practically like the usual minor mode with one very big difference. In the minor mode, the seventh note is called the leading tone because it leads us home to the keynote or tonic which is D. And that leading tone leads us to the tonic by the smallest possible interval, namely a half tone. You see? Amen. It's as though that leading tone were in love with the tonic and were pulled toward it, wants to embrace it, it wants to get there. Oh. And it does. But in the Dorian mode, where the seventh note is a half tone lower, there's a full whole step between it and the tonic. So it just doesn't seem to lead as strongly. It's, it's not in love with the tonic. It's friendly enough, but it just wants to shake hands. You feel how formal, how strange and modal that sounds, that amen? And the minute we hear that amen, we feel behind it the weight of many centuries of a different, older, more Eastern culture. Bach never wrote an amen like that, and neither did Beethoven or Brahms. <clears throat> but in our own century, it gets written all the time. For example, this. Secret agent man, secret agent man. Well, that's no amen, of course. But musically, it's exactly the same idea. You see? Well, that's an awful lot about the Dorian mode, which may you never forget, as long as you live, starts on D. Right. Now let's get on to the next one, which starts on E, the next note. This is called the Phrygian mode. And again, this is terribly easy to find on the piano. You start on E, again you play white note up to the next E, and there's your Phrygian mode. Now this Phrygian mode is very much like the Dorian in that it is a minor mode, and it has that lowered seventh or leading tone. You see, again that formal, strange modal sound. But it also has something else, very unusual. It's the only mode that begins with a step of a half tone. That is from the first note, E, to the second note, F, is a mere half step. And that gives the music a especially sad quality, which can be heard in so much Spanish and 
Hebrew and gypsy music. For instance, you all know the beginning of Liz's famous second Hungarian Rhapsody, don't you? You hear that typical sad gypsy sound? That's the Phrygian mode for you. It's a very oriental sounding mode, but has also been very much used by Western composers, even during that famous 200 year non-modal period, especially when they wanted to create oriental effects, like this well-known spot in Rimsky-Korsakov's Scheherazade, which as you know, is wildly oriental. That's about as oriental as you can get, and it's pure Phrygian. That's the Phrygian scale. But the real surprise is to find that even old unoriental Brahms from Germany has used this mode, very unusual for him, in the slow movement of his fourth symphony. I'm sure you've all heard this solemn and majestic phrase. That's the sound of the Phrygian mode, courtesy of Mr. Brahms. All right, up we climb now to the next mode, which is called the Lydian. And this one, as you might guess, begins on F. And like all the others, it uses only white notes all the way up to the octave. That's the Lydian mode. Now, what makes this one different from the other two modes we've already talked about? Two things. First, that it's a major mode, as you can hear. It's the first one we've met so far. <clears throat> and second, well, let's see if you can tell me. I'm going to play you our normal scale of F major. And now the Lydian scale, starting on F. Now, there's one very peculiar note in that mode, the only note that's different from the usual F major scale. And I want you to tell me which note is the peculiar one by clapping your hands the second you hear it. Is that a deal? Okay. First, here's the normal F major scale, and don't clap. Good, now the Lydian scale, and remember you're gonna clap when you hear the wrong note. Ah, good, great, exactly. It's the fourth note of the scale, which is a half tone higher than the normal one. That's normal. Right? This is abnormal. Good. All right. Now you've got it out of your system. Now that funny note gives this mode a very sort of comical quality, as if a wrong note were being played on purpose. In fact, several 20th century composers have taken advantage of this Lydian mode to get comic effects. For instance, Prokofiev, in his music for his funny film, Lieutenant Kije, uses this mode with its raised fourth note in this piccolo solo. Hear it? Could you detect that wrong note? Now, if this had been written in the straight major scale, it would sound like this. Right? But no, Prokofiev adds his comic touch by using that Lydian raised fourth. But I don't want you to get the idea that the Lydian mode is only comical. On the contrary, it could be a very serious mode indeed. In fact, Beethoven wrote a long, extremely serious movement of a string quartet in this very mode. And of course, it's still used in Roman Catholic plain chant in church. And again, Sibelius, who was always a great mood lover, was constantly using the Lydian mode as in this passage from his fourth symphony. You hear that Lydian note? Only this time it's not a funny note, but a strange 
piercing note that seems to come from a faraway place. And that's only natural because these modes do come from faraway places, like the Middle East and Eastern European countries like Greece, Bulgaria, Finland, Russia, Poland. In fact, Poland is one of the main breeding grounds for this Lydian mode. You constantly hear it in the Polish folk music and in the works of Poland's greatest composer, who was Chopin, of course, especially when he was writing Polish-type dance pieces like polonaises and mazurkas. Here's a bit from one of his best-known mazurkas. Let's see if you can hear that Lydian sound. an odd sound, isn't it? So fresh and sharp, like the taste of lemon juice. And it's a very Polish sound. In fact, when the Russian composer Mussorgsky, now follow this, when the Russian composer Mussorgsky was writing the third act of his opera, Boris Godunov, an act which takes place in Poland, he used this same Polish Lydian mode for his Polonaise, which means Polish dance. And we're going to play it for you now and listen for that tangy Lydian sound of the tune when you hear it. Here it is with the orchestra playing it.
Well, so far we've had a good look at three important modes, the Dorian, the Phrygian, and the Lydian, those white note scales that started on D, on E, and on F, respectively. Now let's have a quick look at the remaining ones, starting with the one that begins on G and rises up through the octave on white note. Now this one is called Don't Panic. This one is called the Mixolydian mode. And despite its tongue-twisting name, it's one of the most appealing and popular modes of all. Again, like its neighbor, the Lydian, it's a major mode, as you can hear. And also, like the Lydian, it has one peculiar note in it, only this time it's a different peculiar note. See if you can tell which it is. Here is a normal G major scale. Now here's the Mixolydian scale, and uh, perhaps you'd care to clap again when you hear the one odd note. Very fine. It's the seventh tone. The leading tone which is half a tone lower than the normal, for which you will not clap, right? No. <laughs> this is the normal one, which is higher. This is the abnormal one, right. Now, this is the only major mode that has a lowered seventh tone, or lowered leading tone. And believe it or not, most of the jazz and Afro-Cuban music and rock and roll tunes we hear owe their very existence to this old Mixolydian mode, like this Cuban riff. That's just Mixolydian. Now, do you hear how that lowered seventh note makes that jazz sound? Of course, the examples I could give you are endless, but just to take a recent smash hit. My baby does the hanky-panky. Mixolydian. Could you believe it? Or do you remember a really terrific song, a barbaric number of a few years ago, sung by a group known as the Kinks? It's called You Really Got Me. Girl, you really got me going. You got me so I can't sleep at night. Yeah, you really got me now. You got me so I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. You really, no, no, no. That's old Mixolydian. <laughs> or... Um, or I wonder if you know that absolutely charming Beatles tune called Norwegian Wood. You hear that lowered seventh? That's what gives it its charm, and that's what makes it Mixolydian. They are all Mixolydian. Now, again, I don't want to give you the idea that this mode produces only jazz and pop music. It's still to be heard as much in churches as in discotheques. And in fact, our old friend Debussy, when he wanted to suggest a cathedral rising out of the sea in that famous piano piece of his called the Sunken Cathedral, uses this same Mixolydian mode. a wonderfully impressive sound. And years ago, I don't mean my son, I mean Debussy's son. And years ago, when I was writing my first ballet, Fancy Free, I also used this Mixolydian mode for one of the dances, since it was a Cuban style number called a danson. I naturally used this mode from beginning to end. So it ought to make a good example. Here it is, and I hope you like it.
And now, in the few minutes that remain to us, I would like to pay my brief respect to the three modes we still haven't discussed. We can do this very quickly, as you will see, because the first one, known as the Aeolian mode, which luckily starts on A, A, Aeolian, easy to remember, is almost like our normal minor scale, using all the white notes. In fact, it is sometimes referred to as the natural minor mode. And its one special feature is, again, that lowered leading tone. which makes it so similar to the Dorian and Phrygian modes that we don't even have to discuss it any further. Then the next mode, starting on B, is known as the Locrian mode. And this one we can really skip because there's almost no music written in it. See, the Locrian mode is strangely unsatisfying. It doesn't seem to be conclusive, mainly because the tonic chord you get from it is terribly unsettled. See what I mean? So hello and goodbye to the Locrian mode. Now we have been through all the white note modes, starting on D, E, F, G, A, and B. And at last we come to C, the starting note of our final and most triumphant mode of all, called the Ionian. Now listen carefully. Here is C, and up we go, white notes only, to the next C. And what have we got? Surprise, the C major scale, the good old tried and true C major of Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms. As, um, now this C major scale, once known as the Ionian, had simply survived better than all its neighbors the evolution of history and emerged in glory as king of all Western music for 200 years. For instance, this tremendous C major celebration by Beethoven. was the last 30 seconds of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, and there's no doubt that it's in C major. Beethoven doesn't leave any doubt about that. He hammers the point home. Well, by now you've heard enough about modes and heard enough examples of them, so that I think you're ready to hear Debussy's fete again, and this time really connect with it. Now, just to refresh your memory, you recall that opening dancey tune in the Dorian mode? And then a little later on, Debussy switches to the Lydian mode. You remember the one with the raised fourth note, that Polish one? That's Lydian. Then a few seconds later, he's suddenly in the Mixolydian mode. You remember, that's the jazzy one with the lowered leading tone. And so in the first half minute of the piece, Debussy has already used three different modes, none of them major or minor, the Dorian, the Lydian, and the Mixolydian. Then in that famous middle section, when the distant procession begins, we hear it first again in the Dorian mode. That's Dorian, but it immediately switches to Mixolydian. And so it goes, one mode after another, throughout the whole piece. Now, just before we play it for you, there's one thrilling spot in this piece that I'd like to prepare you for so you can enjoy it as much as possible. And that's the wonderful moment when the march music and the dance music come crashing together. Now, the trick is, of course, that they're both in the Dorian mode, so they make perfect mates. This is the dance music. <laughs> Thank you. 
And here is the march music. And here are the two musics together. Isn't that a staggering sound? Now, listen to the entire piece again, and I hope you enjoy it at least twice as much as you did the first time you heard it.
From Philharmonic Hall in Lincoln Center, the first of this season's New York Philharmonic Young People's Concerts, under the musical direction of Leonard Bernstein, has been a program titled, What is a Mold? Featured were performances of Fet from Nocturne by Debussy, the Polonaise from Boris Godunov by Mussorgsky, and the Danzon from Fancy Free by Leonard Bernstein. This program was recorded in Philharmonic Hall and was produced and directed by Roger England.